I live in a small country where things still go bump in the night, and that doesn't go for just creepy local legends. Dark strangers, cartels, I think you get the idea. Where I live, nowhere is truly removed from the day-to-day -day dangers of the unknown. It was a dark night. I found myself home alone. Here, it isn't uncommon for the entire family to live together. Grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren will all share a growing piece of property for wealth and security. It's the simplest way to live. But as you can imagine, being home alone is a rarity. With so many people under one roof, it's almost impossible to time anything just right to ever be actually alone. So I did what I always do. I hooked up the surround sound throughout the living room and turned out all the lights. I bundled up on the couch with my favorite snack and watched whatever I desired on the big family television. Despite the ever-present danger I mentioned earlier, I remember the evening being quite relaxing. Rain and a breeze moved in along the coast and created a pitter-patter against the roof. As the night went on, I thought I heard someone at the front door. As I moved to investigate, the sound and movement stopped. But being a stormy night, and that I had the sound up so loud, I truly in my heart believed I'd simply heard something that wasn't there. I turned back to the movie and did my best to relax. That's when the back door began to rattle. I adjust myself on the sofa to get a better look. When someone starts to knock, a frantic, heavy banging against the hardwood. I froze in place. Whatever I dismissed as storm sounds or... Maybe just the junk blowing around in the backyard is now undeniable. There's someone trying to come inside the house. Everyone who lives there naturally has a key. Whoever is outside the door clearly does not. At the time, I'm an 18-year-old man. I'm running through the logical scenarios in my head. Whoever this is, they tried to open up the front door, then slip around the side of the house and is now trying to force the back door open. This isn't cartel or a monster. Anything with real bloodlust would have forced the front door open. I reason that it's a common thief, probably someone very nervous and trying to remain unseen. Being 18, I decide to take them head on and show the world this asshole picked the wrong house. I move from the couch to the kitchen, grab the biggest cleaver I can find. 10 inches of dingy, ugly steel. Still, the door handle is twisting back and forth. Go time. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm down for whatever. There's nothing like the mentality of a teenager. You don't know who you're messing with, I shouted through the door. The stranger on the other side stopped shaking the handle for a moment. I know you're out there. You have three seconds to get the f out of here, or I'll cut you up. They didn't care. The knocking started again, even harder than before. My confidence quickly faded. I took a deep breath and readied myself. In my head, this was do or die. Hoisting the cleaver over my head, I unfastened the bolt and threw open the door before me. It wasn't a burglar or a gangster of any kind. It was my sweet little grandma. She stood there soaking wet with an expression of agitation, but also unmistakable terror. What are you doing? She shouted at me. Me? What are you doing at the back door? I asked. I thought you were an intruder. No, oh, no, no. She laughed as she stepped inside the house. I went and paused the television while she shed her coats by the door. She explained that she'd gotten home during the storm, tried knocking for a while. That was the noise I heard at the front door. I guess she knocked for quite a while because she finally gave up and decided to try the back door. The front entrance has a little cover, so she figured that even if it were locked, at least she would be out of the rain. That's when I started to hear the commotion and decided to go to war with whatever was outside. Glad I didn't though, because I seriously almost killed my grandma. I live in a pretty rural area outside of your average middle America town. It was my night off and I decided to just hang around the house myself. I got some things done around the yard, did a little self-care, and then settled in with dinner and a movie for the evening. I like to be low energy every now and again, but still, I have the tendencies of a night owl. The movie turned into a TV show, and soon it was well past midnight. I hunkered down with my phone and a blanket and let the night really begin. Just as I'm zoning out, 
someone starts pounding on my front door. Not a knock, but a full force blow against the wood. I freeze for a moment, but then I make the easy assumption it's my boyfriend coming over for a spontaneous booty call. This was common behavior for him and one of the reasons I did like staying up late. I barely had to stand up from the couch to be able to see through the small glass window in the front door. Now, I really do freeze. My heart is the only thing I can feel in motion, steadily slamming up my throat. Staring back at me through the pain was not my boyfriend, but an older, bearded stranger. It was the most unfamiliar face I'd ever seen. This little window in the door was weird because if you were up close and trying to look through it, the prismatic glass skewed the optics, made it impossible to know what you were looking at. You had to have some distance between yourself and the window, like I had right now, to make out what was actually on the other side. This guy was looking at me, but I knew he couldn't actually see me. I snuck back down the hallway and hid in the doorway of my bedroom. I was scared, but I would have been way more scared if I didn't have an eye on him. I couldn't imagine how I'd feel if I turned my back for one second and lost track of him. Remember when I said I live rural? Well, I also live in a cellular dead zone. I didn't even bother to find the damn thing. Instead, I stepped to my bedside and fished the landline from my end table. I hit the dial button and brung the receiver to my ear. It's completely dead in my hand. The guy hammers on the door, this time screaming at the top of his lungs. Let me in! He slurs. My blood runs cold. This is now worse than a horror movie. I start running through what few options are available to me. No phone. No way to get to the car. No one coming to get me. I have to stay inside where it's safe. That's the only thing that makes sense. First, I sneak into the kitchen. Slide the chef knife out of the block. It's the only weapon in the whole house. Next, I slink into the bathroom across from my bedroom and lock the door. It's just a weak little handle lock, but it's enough to buy me some time if he actually breaks through the front door. For some reason, the idea of keeping the high ground was pulsing through my mind. It was literally all I could think about, for I barricaded myself in the bathroom. So, I climbed up onto the countertop and crouched above the door. If he broke in, I'd be able to jump on his back and stab him in the neck and shoulders. I was terrified of the whole thing, but I do have to admit, I was very pleased with my whole little assault strategy. In my head, it made the most sense. With a knife in hand, all I had to do was sink at home. Time went by. That guy just keeps yelling. Hey, let me in. Now he was moving around the house. I could hear his hand dragging along the siding as he walked from end to end. He checked each and every window, yanking on the frame, pushing on the glass. Thankfully, I kept them all locked, as well as both doors. I could hear his frustration, and he took to wailing on the walls again, demanding I let him inside. Something occurred to me. That handset I fished out from my bedside table was dead. This psycho didn't cut the line. I just didn't charge the phone. There was a second one down the hall in the kitchen. Nervously, I climbed down from my perch on the countertop and waited until I heard the guy on the opposite side of the house. I unlocked the door and bolted for the phone, which was exactly where I thought it'd be, sitting in the cradle by the back door. I snagged it and retreated back to the bathroom. I called 911 and they dispatched a few officers but were totally transparent when they told me it'd take at least 15 minutes for them to get there. I was on my own and needed to stay frosty until they arrived. I stayed on the line until the cops arrived. They could hear the guy pulling and kicking at the doors, screaming for me to open it. The longest 15 minutes of my life. When they arrived, they apprehended the man immediately. Dispatch confirmed that I could exit the house, where I stepped out to find a whole team of cops standing around one dirty, scruffy, drunk-off-his-ass hippie-looking kid. He was cuffed, sitting on the ground, totally confused about the situation. He clearly wasn't a murderer. There was a party down the road. This kid stumbled off to take a piss or something, got lost in the dark, and thought my house was the spot. He convinced himself that everyone had locked the doors and was hiding somewhere. It turned out to be a big misunderstanding, but still, it was absolutely terrifying. To this day, nothing compares to what I felt that night. Remember to keep your phones charged and at the ready.
I live on my own in a two-bedroom house. I used to rent out the spare room to tenants on a long-term basis, but when I heard about Airbnb, I learned that I could maximize the profits by charging more money for a short stay. Sometimes I could earn in a long weekend what I would receive for charging a month's rent, so it seemed like a no-brainer. This meant I either had the place to myself for a good portion of the month, or I was receiving a higher income for the month. Either way, it was a win. This one night, I received a booking from a new Airbnb user called Ella. When I say new, I mean her profile didn't have any feedback or anything indicating she had used the platform before. She had booked for two nights, and this was fine with me. Airbnb was pretty established at this point, and I would always take photos before and after to save arguments of damage. Plus, I had cameras installed in all the communal areas to protect me from damage or theft. The room I rented out was an ensuite bedroom and included a microwave and kettle in the room, so there was no real reason to leave unless you were leaving the house. Ella arrived, and at first glance she seemed nice, nothing unusual. We made some small talk, and she said she was just visiting some friends for the weekend and needed somewhere to crash. I showed her around and carried her bag up to her room and handed her her key and left her there. I usually just stayed in my room when people were over. The living room was off limits to guests, but usually when guests hear the television, they take it upon themselves to come in and chat, whereas people seem to respect the privacy of a bedroom a little more. That night I heard Ella walking around the house. She didn't make a lot of noise or anything, but I could hear the creaking of the floorboards as she tiptoed down the hall. I soon fell asleep as I had been working all week and when I woke in the morning, everything seemed normal, nothing unusual about the house. I saw Ella leaving and wished her a good day. It was that night where things got really weird. I heard Ella come home and remember looking at the clock next to my bed. It was 1.15. I could hear two voices, Ella's and someone else's. I had explained the rules of no other guests in the house without asking me first, so I jumped out of bed to tell her there would be an additional charge for anyone else. I opened my bedroom door and there was Ella, standing on her own. I looked down the hall and there was no one there. Ella looked at me stunned as to why I had shot out of the bedroom door so fast. I'm sorry, I thought I heard more than one voice. Ella replied, It's okay, it happens all the time. I smiled and closed the door. What did she mean? It happens all the time. I thought this was an odd thing to say, and it kind of gave me chills. I was convinced she was talking to someone though, so I thought I would check the camera footage. The footage didn't record audio, as I thought that was a bit invasive, but as I watched the playback, Ella did appear to be talking to someone. She was smiling, laughing, and even looking to her side as if someone else was walking through the house with her, but as far as I could see, she was alone. Then, I heard a loud thud, which sounded like it came from the hall, more specifically, outside my room. I felt a bit weirded out from watching that video of Ella walking through the house talking to someone, so I switched to the live feed. Ella's face was right in front of the hall camera. I shouted to her to ask if she was okay. She turned around and walked back into her bedroom without saying a word. I never saw her for the rest of the night. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night either. Sunday morning, I heard Ella's bedroom door close and heard her walking down the hallway, and then I heard the front door close. Most people thank you and say they had a nice time, but not Ella. She just left. Sunday night, still weirded out by the night before, I thought I would check out the cameras from Friday night too. Ella had been walking around the house for three hours in the middle of the night, but Ella didn't just walk around. She urinated in my kitchen sink, then went to the fridge and drank my orange juice straight out of the carton. Then she helped herself to my food, placing her hands in the likes of my cereal boxes and biscuits. She didn't even wash her hands after urinating in my sink. Then she walked just out a shot of the camera. I could see her arms moving, and then she walked over to the freezer, opened it, put her arm inside, then closed it. 
did she just put something in my freezer? I went to the freezer to check it out, and this grown-ass woman had taken a shit in her hand while in my kitchen and put it in my freezer. I was absolutely in shock at what I just saw. I reported her to Airbnb and submitted the footage. I received some compensation, but this girl was a freak and not right in her head. I think she was banned from the platform after that, and since then, I've had no more weird encounters. Not yet, anyway. I'm a relatively well-known gamer on YouTube and other social media platforms. I'm not super famous or anything, but I do have a decent following, and for this reason, I would like to keep my identity anonymous. I had been gaming for about six months when I received a message through Kick asking if I wanted to partake in a meet in a nearby city. Truth be told, I thought it was a scam from the get-go and asked for some more info, and a man who called himself Henry said that I wouldn't need to pay for anything and that he would be renting out an Airbnb for us all to stay and game in. It sounded too good to be true, and I said I wasn't interested. Henry said they were developing a new platform that had some investors, and it was all 100% funded and legit. They had all the connections to make it happen, and had been watching me for a while, and believed we could help each other out. As much as my mom and my friends mocked me for wanting to be a professional gamer, I would do anything to try and elevate my status and earn a living from gaming, and so I decided I was all in, despite how much it sounded like a scam. Henry then sent me the booking confirmation of a house he had rented through Airbnb. The receipt read $1,200 for a weekend. This was crazy, and it looked super cool. The fact it had been booked and paid for proved the legitimateness of the event. The rooms all had double beds and ensuite. There was a hot tub outside in the garden, and there was nothing for kilometers around us, so we could be as loud as we wanted. The only condition was... I had to bring all my own gear for the setup. I knew this was going to be a hassle, but it seemed worth it. It was a two-hour drive away from my house, and so I set off in plenty of time with all my gear loaded in the back of the car. I was hella excited. I arrived at the address given to me just as it was starting to turn dark. I noticed straight away that there were no other cars in the driveway. I wasn't sure what was going on, so I went up to the door and knocked. There was no answer, and there were no lights on inside, meaning I was the first one there, I was in the wrong place, or no one else was coming. I walked around the house looking for any signs of life, but I found no one. I checked the details Henry had sent me. I even checked the pictures on the Airbnb app, and I was definitely in the right place. I decided to wait it out, and after about 30 minutes, I heard a rustling coming from the bushes about 60 feet to my right. I wasn't sure if this was a wild animal or not, but I didn't want to take any chances, and so I jumped in my car and reversed so I could shine my headlights towards the bushes. As I did, I saw a shadowy figure, which looked like that of a man, run off into the trees. I was getting scared now. I had arrived a little early, but we were now 20 minutes past the official meeting time, and no one else had turned up. I messaged Henry to find out where he was. As soon as I sent it, I could see he had seen the message, but he never replied. I said to myself that I was going to give it another ten minutes, and then I was going to leave. Ten minutes later, no one else had arrived, and I had had enough. I put my car into drive, and left for home. I never mentioned that the Airbnb was up a long drive on a private road, and as I was driving down, I noticed a car parked with its lights off set back amongst the trees. I never noticed it on the way up, and it would have been easier for me to see from the other side, and due to it still being daylight. Something wasn't right, and I was starting to feel more and more like this was a setup. Just as I was going to pull off the private road, I noticed a faint shadow of a car tailing me. It had to be the car I had passed in the trees, and it still didn't have its lights on. I put my foot on the gas and was out of there as quickly as possible. I eventually got to the highway and I didn't see anyone following me, so I decided to ease up off the gas. I was shaking and anxious and felt like I needed to pull over but just wanted to get myself home. I kept checking my mirrors, making sure nothing was following me, 
and eventually I arrived home close to six hours after I had left. I never heard from Henry again. I was talking to my friend about the whole ordeal a few days later, and he suggested contacting Airbnb about the booking. They told me it was cancelled a few days before, and the person that rented it received a full refund. The weirdest thing was, I had spoken to Henry that day, and he asked me what gear I was bringing to make sure he had enough plugs and extension cords for everyone. I think they planned on stealing my gear when I was there, as they knew I had over $2,000 worth of equipment. Luckily, they weren't stealth sneaking up on me, and I was able to get away unharmed and with all my gear. Our official merch store is finally here. If you want to support more of our channel, check out our merch shop. The link is in the description down below. See you on the next video.